Okay, right. So, before I can explain to you what Fella2 and Van Hoot did to try and show that this endothelium-dependent hyperpolarization factor was not a prostanoid, then I need to actually explain to you what a prostanoid is. So, we will begin with what arachidonic acid is, and I think we'll go over the other page to do this. Right, so, prostanoids are synthesized from arachidonic acid, so we need to start with what arachidonic acid is. So, arachidonic acid then. Now, in order to discuss what arachidonic acid is, I firstly want to tell you about what arachidic acid is. Okay, so we're going to study arachidonic acid, but first I'm going to tell you what arachidic acid is. Okay, and arachidic acid is also known as icosanoic acid. Okay, now icosanoic acid tells you better what it actually is, icosanoic acid, because those of you who can remember your uh, platonic sonnets will remember that an icosahedron is a twelve, uh, it's not a twelve, twenty-sided shape. Okay, so now we know what this is. It's a, car it's a carboxylic acid which has 20 carbons. So here's the carboxylic acid group here. Now, I haven't got space or the willpower to draw out 19 more carbons, so I'm going to cheat. Basically, you're going to have a methylene group repeated 18 times in the middle here. So I'm going to just put one methylene group, put a bracket around it, and then put a little 18 at the bottom. This is a very useful little trick uh, when you're drawing uh, molecular formulae. So this now is my drawing of arachidic or icosanoic acid. It has 20 carbons, one, two, and then the 18 methylene groups in the middle, 20. Okay, and this um, is what I, this is what arachidonic acid is a modification of. So, arachidonic acid, what's the strict name for it? Okay, so arachidonic acid. Okay, the strict name for arachidonic acid is, wait for it, this is a big one, all cis 5, 8, 11, 14, 5, 8, 11, 14, which is quite nice because they all have uh, it goes up in threes, basically. 5 to 8 is free, 8 to 11 is free, 11 to 14 is free. And we're going to see that that reflects quite a nice structure. This molecule actually is quite beautifully patterned. And then, afterwards, icosa, icosa tetrinoic acid, ETA, icosa tetrinoic acid. Okay, right. So, those of you who... Um, who were in on the uh, Amiga 3 um, sort of craze that happened a few years ago, uh, will remember that this looks quite like the name of uh, one of the Amiga 3 uh, fatty acids that they were all advocating that we take to um, strengthen our minds and our hearts. Um, and um, that was icosapentinoic acid. It was slightly more than icosatetrinoic acid. As we're going to see, icosatetrinoic acid is not an omega-3. Arachidonic acid is not an omega-3. Instead, it's what's known as an omega-6, and I'll explain what that means when I've drawn the structure out for this molecule. Okay, so, basically, this is icosanoic acid, so it is a 20-carbon carboxylic acid. However, it has some double bonds, basically. That's what this tetrinoic acid is. It's telling you that you've got four double bonds in this structure somewhere. And we're told exactly where they are. They're at the, on the 5th, the 8th, the 11th, and the 14th carbon. Okay. In addition, we are told about their EZ isomerism state. Okay, so we're told that they are in the cis, they're the cis isomer, and they're all cis isomers. So that's what that means. It means that they are... We have four uh, double bonds. They're all in the cis state, which I'll make sure I do uh, when uh, we actually draw the structure. And I suppose I should probably just remind you of what it means to be a cis state. So basically, if we take the um, simplest example we could possibly do, uh, let's have this sort of molecule here. Okay, so a 
two carbons with a double bond in the middle, and then two methyl groups like this and an H. So basically, this is what's known as the cis isomer of this molecule. Okay, and let me show you the other one, and then hopefully you'll be able to see what's different between them. Okay, this is what's known as the trans isomer of this molecule. Okay, now you might say, what are you on about? Those are the same thing, and I will say no, they're not. This molecule is different fundamentally from this one. You cannot turn this one into this one without breaking this bond, breaking this bond, and swapping them round. So they are fundamentally different. Okay, uh, and cis means on the same side, so these two methyl groups are on the same side. Trans means on opposite sides, so these two methyl groups are on opposite sides. Okay, now it's because this double bond here is just not capable of rotation, basically. So you can't just rotate that whole, those two groups around, basically. They are fixed. Think of these bonds as being like matchsticks. Um, they're, it's, they're not just fuzzy structures that you can, well, <laughs> quantum mechanics might disagree, but then they are rigid structures. You can't, um, you can't swap those two around. They are separate molecules. Okay, and basically when I show you this structure, you'll see how uh, this becomes important. Right, so let's do uh, the structure of this molecule. All cis, 5, 8, 11, 14, icosa, tetrinoic acid. Here we come. So we're going to draw its skeletal structure simply because it's easier. So we'll start off with the first carbon here. Now the first carbon needs to have the carboxylic acid group. Well, it needs to have the carbonyl group and the alcohol group coming off. So this here, we haven't actually drawn the carbon, but that is the carbon of the... Um, let me pull this down a bit. That is the carbon of the carboxylic acid group right there. This is the second carbon here. So we'll continue on now. Third carbon. Fourth carbon. Fifth carbon. Right. We now need a double bond coming off this fifth carbon. And it needs to be in the cis state. So we draw it like that, and then we put them in the cis state, just like this drawing here. These two groups, here and here, they are coming off on the same side. Okay, so that's a cis um, confirmation. Okay, so this was the fifth carbon, sixth carbon, seventh carbon, eighth carbon. Okay, need to draw another one, another double bond here. So this is the uh, double bond off the eighth carbon there. Okay, right. And for reasons that you'll see in a moment, the way we draw it often is like so. We sort of bend the structure back on itself, and you'll see the beautiful symmetry of doing that. And also it's useful for when we actually discuss what cyclooxygenase is going to do to this molecule. So this was the eighth carbon, ninth carbon, tenth carbon, and we'll bend the structure around like this just so that we can show it on a picture. This bond is flexible, so this can rotate. Okay, um, so where were we? Eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. So we need another double bond off this eleventh one, and again it's in the cis state. So again, here's a cis confirmation here. Uh, so this is um, 11, 12, 13, 14, final bond, and now you see why it's beautifully symmetric. And then 15th, 16th, well, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, no, no, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. So there, that is the structure of icosa tetri uh, sorry, of all cis 5, 8, 11, 14 icosa tetrinoic acid. Now, you might hear some people just call it icosa tetrinoic acid. Now, if you just say icosa tetrinoic acid, that just tells you you've got a 20 carbon carboxylic acid with four double bonds. It does not tell you where they are. It doesn't tell you that they're on the 5th, the 8th, the 11th, and the 14th carbon. And you can have icosa tetrinoic acid molecules where they're not in those same positions. So it's ambiguous if you just say icosa tetrinoic acid. Okay? So you do need to say all cis 5, 8, 11, 14, icosa tetrinoic acid to be sure that people know what you're on about. Okay, in addition, um, in addition, chemists, 
Chemists, when they use arachidonic acid, they actually sometimes mean any old eicosatetraenoic acid. So biologists and people doing medicine and nutritionists, uh, they all, uh, when they sort of talk about arachidonic acid, they mean this specific molecule here, all cis 5, 8, 11, 14 eicosatetraenoic acid. Organic chemists, when they use arachidonic acid, they generally just mean any old eicosatetraenoic acid. They don't actually care which isomer of it it is, i.e. where the double bonds are. Uh, so beware of that. Uh, when we talk about arachidonic acid in medicine, we mean this exact molecule that I've shown you here. Okay, right. So, uh, now then. Uh, what do I want to do now? I want to now talk about what cyclooxygenase is going to do to this arachidonic acid molecule. Okay, so arachidonic acid is going to be broken down by the enzyme cyclooxygenase. Right, so this is the starting point. Well, actually, it's going to not be broken down. It's actually going to be turned into other things by the enzyme cyclooxygenase. So this is the starting point. This is the starting substrate for the enzyme cyclooxygenase. Now, there are two major isoforms of the enzyme cyclooxygenase. And sometimes you'll see it written all as one word, but I'll put a dash between them. Cyclooxygenase is often abbreviated to COX for cyclooxygenase. Okay, and there are two main isoforms of COX. There's COX-1 and COX-2. Okay, and they both catalyze the same reactions. Okay, so uh, let's see what the cyclooxygenase enzymes are going to do to this icos well, this all cis 5, 8, 11, 14 icosatetraenoic acid or arachidonic acid. Well, basically, they're initially, they're going to catalyze two separate reactions, okay? So the first reaction that happens is what's known as the cyclooxygenase reaction, okay? And in the cyclooxygenase reaction, what's going to happen is you're going to bring in two oxygen molecules, okay? So here are two oxygen molecules, and you're going to now modify your uh, cyclooxygen, uh, sorry, your uh, arachidonic acid molecule. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to form out of this then. So, this carboxylic acid group remains pretty much the same. Okay, so I'll keep this up here. So this is the carboxylic acid group here. Here's the uh, carbonyl group, and here's the alcohol group. That's the first carbon there, second carbon. Then we've got the third carbon here, the fourth carbon, so where are we now? Da, 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 there, okay? Now, this uh, double bond here is still there, so you still have the double bond of the fifth carbon to the sixth, to the seventh, and then you still go up to the eighth, but now things start to change. Basically, what you are going to do is you're going to cleave these two double bonds here, okay? So let me show those two double bonds cleaved, and then I'll show you what's going to happen to them to make up for the loss of those two double bonds. So we've lost those two double bonds there. Now, how are we going to make up for this? So basically, this atom here, this atom here and this atom here, all four of these atoms, they've got bonds that they want to form. So they've got missing bonds, spare bonds. So we've got a spare bond here, a spare bond here, a spare bond here, and a spare bond here. One of the things you're going to do is you're going to bind this carbon to this carbon here. So you're going to form this rather odd-looking bond as far as our structure is concerned from here to here. So you've broken a bond for this one, broken a bond for this one, so now they're going to form a bond together. What's going to happen to these two? Well, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these oxygen molecules here and you're going to break one of the two double bonds. So you're going to make a peroxide structure here. And now, each of these oxygens will want to form a bond on either side. So you slot this thing in right down here, and it forms bonds on both sides. So this one forms a bond with this carbon up here. This one forms a bond with this carbon down here. And that's that structure complete now. Okay, so that's one of the oxygens used up. Now we'll continue on the structure. Okay, next exciting point. You're going to cut this double bond here, okay? Right, so we'll get a single bond uh, here now instead. Wait a second, 
bring it up here now because there's no need to put it like that anymore because it's just a single bond, right? Okay, and then we'll continue on the structure. So this now is the 14th carbon, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. Okay, so uh, this, however, we've cut a double bond here. So both this carbon and this carbon need an extra bond. Now what you do is this carbon here forms a bond with this carbon here. Okay, but this carbon here didn't need to form an extra bond. So what it does is it cleaves a bond with one of its hydrogens. So now you've got a hydrogen atom floating around. So what you do now is you've got a hydrogen atom, so let's have this hydrogen atom here. This carbon still needs another bond, and you've still got another oxygen molecule to use. So what you do is, again, you cleave one of these bonds between uh, the uh, oxygen molecule to create this peroxide link. And now both of these oxygens need to form bonds. You bind one of them to this carbon here, okay, and then you bind the other one to the hydrogen to create this sort of peroxide link here. Okay, and this whole structure that we've got now, and that thing there shouldn't be there, this whole molecule that we've got now is what's known as prostaglandin, or PG, uh, and whoops, not like that, PGG2, okay? So this is prostaglandin G2. Okay, right. Prostaglandin G2. Right. So, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at the next reaction that the cyclooxygenase enzyme catalyzes, where it turns prostaglandin G2 into prostaglandin H2, and this is the so-called peroxidase reaction.